Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming here today at uh, Brussels Press Club to jointly think about the possible spillover of extremism and terrorism in South Asian region after the fall of Kabul. Since we, the people of uh, Jammu Kashmir, who are divided between Pakistan, China, and India, are the victims of uh, terrorism since 27, 22nd of October, 1947. As you might knew that the Jammu and Kashmir was a princely state in the region outside British India. The ruler of Jammu Kashmir, Maharaja Hari Singh, intend to remain impartial between the newly created dominions, namely Pakistan and India. Having the God of that division of British India, the ruler of Jammu Kashmir upped standstill agreement with Pakistan and India. On 12th of August, 1947, the standstill agreement was honored by the government of Pakistan on the request of government of Jammu and Kashmir. But unfortunately, after two months, the state was invaded from Pakistan with the help of the non-state actors, the term which coined after second seven decades. The Jammu Kashmir, known as a paradise on earth, where the people of different faiths, languages, cultures, ethnicities, were living in complete harmony, and the government was looking after them in a most secular manner during that time. Of course, we cannot compare 18th century or the 19th century rule of law with the 21st century's international law and the modernization of the governance and autonomous status of different states in the regions. But we are undoubtedly proud of our rulers who were evolving gradually with the passage of time and they were keep reforming primitive social, political and constitutional order in the state. The historical reforms were taken place during Maharaja Rambir Singh, the second ruler of Jammu and Kashmir, and the laws which were incorporated during his reign are still in practice, known as Rambir Penal Court. And historical state subject law, the inception of Jammu Kashmir High Court and Jammu Kashmir People's Assembly, known as Parjasaba, was also created during the last Maharaja Hari Singh, respectively in 1927, 28, and 1934. So this was a short brief of our state. And there is also another aspect that since the division of British India, Pakistan constantly try to occupy Jammu and Kashmir by force. The first operation which was launched in Jammu Kashmir was known as Operation Gulmarg. 
the second oppression which resulted india pakistan war was known as operation gibraltar the third oppression which is still going on in different shapes and manifestation is known as operation tapak which was designed by the military general and ruler of pakistan general ziaul haq and it was came into force in after his death in 1987 86 and another operation was also conducted in the northern part of jammu kashmir which resulted in india pakistan war in 1999 that was called operation ko pema after operation as in english it is operation mountaineers so this is these are two different parallel aspects which the people of jammu and kashmir are facing and today since the taliban has taken over kabul the government of pakistan its ministers some of its journalists academia eulogized taliban victory and claimed that the afghanistan is graveyard of empires and that the united states of america along with its nato counterparts have been defeated by the afghans and so they have won the battle with the help of god and from afghanistan they can conquer entire world to implement their kind of international order this kind of media war and media propaganda is supporting extremist groups not only inside pakistan but also supported by pakistan and which are staying in different shapes in pakistani administered part of jammu and kashmir which is formerly known as azad kashmir and i hope our colleagues and fellow speakers would shed more light on this phenomena of extremism and terrorism which is spreading from afghanistan supported by pakistan and its military establishment and that is threatening civil society democratic forces and women rights in the region and from the region it's jeopardizing peace and stability of the entire world this was the introductory introductory remarks and now i would like to invite mr andy vermot he is a prominent human rights activist and also ngo representative in belgium and recently he has visited united nations human rights council in geneva and there he he has made invaluable contribution for the promotion and protection of fundamental human rights and right to development of the people so the floor is your mr andy thank you thank you jamil um i wanted to talk about uh, the importing of uh, terrorism out of asia into belgium so uh, hello everybody uh, my name is andy vermout and i'm the president of postversa fundamental rights chapter we were stunned to learn that a homemade bomb had been found in the town of rooselare in west flanders belgium a palestinian man has been detained on accusations of being a member of a terrorist organization during a search of the man's home in rooselare explosives were discovered and confiscated an earlier incident in antwerp included him and his brother attacking and beating up their allegedly two western sister and brother in law as a president of postversa fundamental rights chapter i congratulate the belgian security services for the breakthrough made in this case this is a result of an 
effective and good cooperation between the various Belgian security services. The two males were taken into custody according to a statement released by the Federal Public Prosecutor's Office on Tuesday morning, the 28th of September, 2021. The first brother has already been arrested during the weekends of September 18 and 19, and the second brother, who had been on the run for a week, surrendered to the authorities on Friday, 24 September 2021, after a week on the run. As a president of Postversa, fundamental rights chapter, I was pleased to hear that these people have been detained, given the security risk they pose. The explosives were discovered in his home on the Hoogleetse Steenweg in Rooselare, West Flanders, on Sunday, September 19. After the police conducted the search, on Tuesday afternoon, the federal public prosecutor said that the investigating magistrates in Bruges has arrested just the, the second of two men who had been detained. The other brother was already released. As a president of Postversa Fundamental Rights Chapter, I do not understand why the other brother was not further detained, considering he was also allowed to whip his sister for allegedly behaving too Western. Deputy Public Prosecutor Wenke Roggen said the other Palestinian brother was detained on suspicion of participating in the operations of a terrorist organization, as well as a number of breaches of the weapons legislation. The public prosecutor's office did not want to discuss the specific explosive that were discovered in the home because it might jeopardize the investigation. In this case, Rogan describes the situation of as follows. It involves a potentially lethal gadget, empty bullet casings, and powder residues. With Postversa Fundamental Rights Chapter, we conducted, of course, further investigations into this case. And it seems that the weapon was a homemade device, perhaps a kind of pipe bomb, according to our knowledge. This consists of a metal tube that has been loaded with explosives and sealed with screw on caps. Electrical wires are sent to ignition me mechanism via one of the caps on the end of the cap. In the world of investigative circles, the bomb is primitive, but yet very effective. As a president of Postversa Fundamental Rights Chapter, I'm concerned about such extreme figures who manufacture homemade bombs, quite possibly not to tear down a wall, but effectively to carry out an attack, a terroristic attack on Belgian soul. The integration policy has here clearly failed. The Belgian Dovo demining agency was called to remove the explosives and conduct additional investigation. According to the reports, the brothers who lived in the house in Rousselare where the explosives were discovered, provided an improbable explanation for the existence of the explosives in their home. Despite the fact that the two detained individuals were previously known to the police as being radicalized, it is unclear 
if they were also on the so-called OCAT lists of possibly dangerous extremists. The tale of the brothers began on Friday, September 17th in Antwerp, when the local police were sent to a reported house invasion. On the scene, it was discovered that the two Palestinian males had broken into the house of their sister and brother-in-law. It was determined that the couple had acted in a too Western manner by the radical brothers that they had been beaten. The Antwerp police district recognized immediately that the brothers were suspected of being radicalized and sent a specialized arrest teams to arrest their pair. They discovered the bombs when they attempted to arrest them in Russelare. The Antwerp police detained the first brother and the invest investigation was taken over by the terrorist division of the Federal Judiciary Police in Brussels. A spokesperson for the Federal Public Prosecutor's Office said at this time there were no indications that any additional suspects may be engaged in the investigation. As a president of Postversa, fundamental rights chapter, I hope that the investigation will set further light on the possible attack that could allegedly be carried out with this homemade bomb. This self-made bomb may, of course, not have been made for hobby, hobby purposes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Andy Vermoot, uh, for shedding uh, a light on the ongoing situation in Belgium, which is the capital of uh, European Union, and most of the important institutions of uh, EU are situated in this country and also in, in the city of Brussels. Uh, this we can see from where these extremist groups seeking knowledge and energy and motivation. So in this regard, the security agencies and the different governments should also take uh, cognizance of online content, uh, which is uh, actually uh, encouraging those youth who are misguided and brainwashed and uh, sent from those areas which are hit by the extremism and terrorism and also with other regional conflicts. So now I would like to invite uh, uh, Mrs. Manal Slami. She is the advisor of the European People's Party for its uh, international relations. So now the floor is your made up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jamil, and thank you everyone for the invitation. Uh, I'm really honored to be here to speak about uh, women's rights uh, in South Asia and also uh, violence against women, mainly in South Asia after um, uh, what is happening um, now in Afghanistan and, and in Pakistan. Uh, women's rights and violence against women in South Asia. Uh, let us start with the example of Pakistan. Noor Mukaddam's ultimate hours have been terror-filled. Beaten repeatedly, the 27-year-old girl from and thrown from a window, however, changed in a dragged back, crushed once more, and sooner or later beheaded. An adolescent's body has been charged together along with her killing. The grotesque dying ultimate week in the community of the Pakistani capital Islamabad is the trendy of a sequence of assaults on ladies in Pakistan, in which human rights activists say it's, a, it's such agenda primarily based totally attacks are rising and show the degree of extremism and violence against women. Mukhatam is the daughter of a diplomat and her fame as a member of the elite has shown 
or has highlighted the relentless and developing violence in opposition to women in Pakistan, stated a distinguished white activist, Tahira Abdullah. But the number of ladies and women who suffer from such violence are on the rise. Most of the time, they are from the middle class and their deaths are now regularly ignored. I quote, I may want to come up with a listing longer than my arm, best in a single week, end of quote, of assaults in opposition to women, stated Abdullah. I quote, the epidemic of sexual crimes and violence in opposition to women in Pakistan is a silent epidemic. No one sees it. No one is speaking about. End of quote. Still, Pakistan's parliament didn't issue any law against the domestic violence that seeks to defend women from violence at home, including the assaults um, from their husbands. Instead, it requested an Islamic ideology and it weighs any measure against uh, the Islamic law. In 2020, Pakistan coming in at 153 out of 163 countries before headed of best Iraq, Yemen, and Afghanistan, which held the ultimate spot regardless of billions of um, dollars spent on two decades of worldwide interest on gender problems. Many of the assaults in Pakistan are so referred as honor call killings, in which the offender is a brother, father, or a different male relative. Each 12 months, greater than more than 1,000 ladies are killed in one way. A lot of them are unreported, says Human Rights Watch workers. I quote, the government didn't set up safety or duty for abusers in opposition to ladies and girls. Inclusive, to, uh, inclusive of so referred to as honor killings, pressure or forced marriage, which a human rights document mentioned. The, the human rights corporations had been sharply focusing on Prime Minister Imran Khan and his authorities in his excuses of the perpetrator's assaults on women. This kind of behavior encourages, um, uh, encourages the human rights violations regarding women. His data minister for Chowdhury uh, says, Ken's statements had been taken out of context and denied violence in opposition to women without supplying any evidence. He stated that we encourage ladies in politics and sports activities and in provinces in which Khan celebrations dominates human rights regulations and which was, has be, had been strengthened lately. I quote, I assume this notion isn't always truly near reality that during Pakistan, women aren't secure and perhaps there is a misogyny in exercise in Pakistan, end of quote. Chaudhry stated in an interview, one of all Khan's cabinet ministers, Ali Amin Gantpur, advised a rally of male supporters that he would slap and slap, I quote, a lady competition political leader. Such, um, uh, such uh, testimonies witness that there is a growth of ultra-conservative ultra or even extremist values in Pakistan, stated Amir Rana, one of the Pakistan Institute of Peace Studies. Now I go to the second case, the case of Afghanistan. Although Taliban spokesman Zavidullah Mujahid promised on August 17th that the Taliban might honor ladies' rights inside the Islamic law, violence in opposition, to women continues. The Taliban shot a girl in Tahar province because she doesn't wear a burqa simply a few hours later. The Taliban additionally issued new legal guidelines and rules within 
the captured districts of Tahar province, ordering ladies to no longer depart domestic alone and set dowry rules for women. These movements humiliate women. The home state of affairs and in Afghanistan says that ladies are victims of violence since 1990s. Women are, uh, are victims of numerous kinds of violence, honor killings, rape, beatings, lashing, uh, lashings, imposed prostitutions, acid, uh, acid assaults, uh, forced marriage, and marriage to remedy tribal and land associated animosity. Violence in opposition to women at some point of militant assaults has additionally grown to be a popular manner of lifestyles within inside the war-ravished country. According to the United Nations Assistant Mission in Afghanistan, there had been 1,146 ladies casualties in 2020, 390 killed and 756 injured. This marked the very best wide variety considering the systematic documentation started in 2009. Women had been mainly harmed from the use of rockets, exclusive devices, etc. Many had been additionally killed and injured in centered killing incidents. The Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission um, uh, had instances of excessive violence dedicated in, in reg with regard to women, it recorded a complete of 3,477 3, instances of violence in opposition to women. This compromised 1,241 1, instances of um, physical violence regarding women, including Instances of mutilation, sexual violence, and torture regarding ladies, verbal, intellectual violence, financial and economic violence are depriving these women from their rights to, in to the inheritance, or also their right to supplying alimony, which is nafaka and stopping a function in their own circle of relatives, promoting their assets without their consent. These instances of domestic violence, early marriage, forced marriage, are stopping women from going to school, from having economic independence. And the state of affairs in Afghanistan is really afraid of the situation because of these instances of violence regarding women have never ended. With the Taliban now in control, women's rights advocates should support Afghani women and should show solidarity towards what they are enduring every day. Now I come to the conclusion with regard to the situation here in Belgium and in Europe. These women are sometimes escaping from discrimination, violence, persecution, to find the same strategy sometimes here, uh, tragedy, sorry, sometimes here in Europe. Europe witnessed so many honor killings on its soil. Women from Muslim background coming from South Asia, Middle East, can be an object to force hijab and force marriage. Unfortunately, political leaders, media influencers, and even women's rights advocates sometimes avoid speaking about these issues because they are afraid to be accused of racism or what they call Islamophobia. But we should be always remembering that these young women and girls fled their countries to have a better life here in Europe as equal human beings and not to be victims of the same ideology that they were forced to endure in their homelands. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Manal, for your comprehensive insight of the uh, 
situation which is evolving in Afghanistan and uh, in Pakistan and also around the globe. And uh, since uh, you have spoken so much about uh, the women rights violations in Afghanistan and Pakistan, now you can realize that how would be the situation of the women in which are under the administration of Pakistan. So before, now I'm going to invite Mr. Philip de Winter is uh, the Senator of Belgium. And the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Hello, I hope you can understand me. I hope you can understand me now. I didn't prepare any intervention or speech. Uh, I'm just interested uh, in the topic. And I had the opportunity uh, to visit um, many of uh, these countries in uh, the past. And I'm very well aware about uh, the situation and also the threat. Uh, not also only the threat for the local people, for the indigenous people of uh, Afghanistan and, uh, of course, also Pakistan, of this uh, radical uh, Islam, uh, but also uh, the threat for us as Europeans. And I think the threat uh, for us as Europeans is, um, well, first of all, uh, the fact that um, after the defeat of Islamic State in uh, Iraq and in Syria, um, we now have a new uh, possibility of, uh, organization, of organizing uh, radical Muslims who uh, are traveling from uh, Europe uh, to, in the past, Syria and uh, Iraq to be trained by Islamic State and will now have the possibility to travel to Afghanistan to become uh, radical uh, militants uh, of the Taliban and also terrorists, international terrorists, who can also be um, uh, uh, sent to Europe uh, as we have seen that uh, some years ago with terrorist attacks in Brussels and Paris. Um, that's the first threat, the, the terrorist threat. Uh, the Taliban has money, the Taliban has experience, the Taliban has uh, also the means now uh, to organize those sort of people, to train them. And I think uh, this is a really big threat and we should be aware of that. And therefore, I, I'm really concerned about the fact that uh, the European Union and our governments are dealing with the Taliban, are taking the Taliban serious, are uh, talking with them uh, on an official way, uh, organizing trade and that sort of things. I think that's a, a very bad thing. We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't legalize Taliban. We shouldn't officialize them. We shouldn't speak with them. We should boycott them completely. That's the only way we can deal with uh, the Taliban. Of course, there is the, 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 the question of what should happen with the population. It's a difficult question. Um, how can we help the population of Afghanistan without helping the Taliban? Uh, and I'm very well aware that a, a, a large majority of the uh, population of uh, Afghanistan is not supporting the Taliban and want to get rid of them. Um, it's always a difficult question. Should we intervene or not? Should we uh, uh, help uh, those uh, groups who are resisting the Taliban? Should we give them money? Should we give them weapons? Should we give them training? Um, we still have to decide about that, and, and, uh, but I think uh, on the long run, it will be the only possibility to deal with Taliban, because if we don't deal with the Taliban, it will uh, explode. Uh, and I mean with exploding that it will also um, be possible for radical Muslim groups uh, to take over power in other countries. And uh, the Taliban will surely try to do that. Um, and of course, um, having the means, having the weapons, having the money, having the organization and the, the structures of uh, a real state, uh, the state of Afghanistan, 
they are not only an internal threat for Afghanistan, but I think an international threat for the whole free world, for the whole Western world, and certainly for us as Western Europeans. Secondly, you have the, the, the situation in Pakistan. Uh, for me, it's very clear Pakistan is a terror state. And we shouldn't deal with them any, <laughs> in either. They are as dangerous as the Taliban. Um, and I, I think on the long run, there will be an alliance between the Taliban and Pakistan. Uh, they will uh, work together. They will use their efforts. They will use their influence um, to spread radical Islam all over the world. Um, and it's a threat uh, for India. It's a threat for all the countries uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, but it's also a threat for us as Europeans, because this is EU today. This is a European conference uh, talking about um, the possible um, uh, influence of what's happening over there, uh, over here. And, and therefore, also, I'm very well aware that uh, Pakistan is a country that is supporting international terrorism. It happened already many times in the past, and it will happen uh, once again uh, in the future. Um, so also over there, I'm in favor of a complete boycott of Pakistan. Uh, don't treat them as a normal state. They are and will always be a terror state. Uh, who is involved in international terrorism and who is helping international terrorism to destabilize uh, non-Islamic, non-radical Islamic countries. Um, and therefore, um, I think, and I heard the lady who, was, who said that uh, people who are critical about Islam in, um, in Europe are always, um, well, treated as being racist, Islamophobia, and so on and so on. This is a, a typical um, uh, view of, of countries like Pakistan who are threatening everybody who says we don't want the Sharia, we don't want radical Islam, we don't want that sort of things over here. Um, uh, yeah, then you are always immediately a racist or Islam Islamophobe or something uh, similar. Uh, I know how it works. It's very easy if you put the label Islamof Islamophobe or racist on, on somebody, you don't have to, uh, to, to, to talk with him anymore. Uh, the discussion is closed. It's very easy in politics to do it uh, this way. But I'm aware of the fact that also in Europe, people are um, concerned about what's happening uh, over there because they... they uh, their, their eyes were opened uh, during the period that Islamic State was in power in the Caliphate in parts of Syria and um, uh, Iraq. We have seen what happened. We uh, were also uh, attacked by uh, Islamic States here in Brussels, uh, only a few meters away of the International Press Center where you are uh, at the moment. Uh, there was a terrorist attack at the metro, there were terrorist attacks on uh, the, our airport, uh, there were terrorist attacks in France, all over Europe, uh, organized by Islamic states. And we have to be aware that a lot of those people are already over here. You don't, there is not only the radicalization of youngsters uh, uh, who uh, became Islamic um, by conversion, but uh, there are a lot of Pakistanis over here. There are a small amount of Afghan, Afghan, Afghanistan people uh, who are sympathizing with uh, the Taliban. Let that be clear. Um, not the political refugees uh, who came over here to, to in search of protection. We respect them and uh, we, we, uh, we are uh, supporting them. But uh, there are also uh, people who infiltrate into our society. We've seen that with Islamic State and it will happen again with the Taliban. Maybe they are here already. Uh, our security uh, forces uh, are uh, telling us in Parliament that we have to be aware and, and, and uh, that, that some of those groups are trying to infiltrate, to commit su suicide uh, bombing attacks, to commit uh, terrorist attacks over here in, uh, in Europe. And with the help of an, 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 an official government, the Taliban government in Afghanistan, and with the help of a terror state in, um, in, in Pakistan, it will be much easier for them 
to organize, uh, to, to, to be funded, uh, to, 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 uh, to, to commit this uh, sort of uh, terrorist attack. So for me, as a conclusion, it's very simple. First of all, we have um, the threat of, of mass immigration once again, because a lot of uh, refugees uh, will come to Europe. Uh, they'll seek their, their, uh, a better future for themselves and their families here in Europe. Uh, they are fleeing from Afghanistan. They are fleeing uh, like they did from uh, 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 Iraq and, and Syria. And I'm afraid of a third, uh, a third refugee crisis in Europe uh, once again. Um, that's first thing. And the second thing is that we, we are also afraid, uh, are very well aware, that the, the, the takeover uh, of power in Afghanistan uh, with the help uh, of Pakistan uh, from, and, and the installation of a Taliban government is a real big threat, a security threat, a military threat uh, and, 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 and terrorist threat for us as uh, Europeans. So we are with those people who are uh, resisting. We are with uh, all of you who are uh, fighting uh, against Taliban and against the terror state of Pakistan. Uh, let that be clear. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Philip de Winter, for your insight of the entire situation which is evolving uh, in the region and outside of the region as well. Um, I would uh, like to welcome uh, uh, Pashtun Tafas Movement Delegation, Mr. Ramanullah and Dishan Bhatta Shinwari. Thank you very much for participating in this uh, conference today. And now I would like to invite uh, a prominent uh, political leader uh, who was eventually uh, expelled from the Pakistani occupied Kashmir and he, he was a, a human rights lawyer in uh, Pakistani occupied Kashmir as well. Uh, Mr. Sardar Shokut Ali Kashmiri, the chairman of uh, uh, United Kashmir People's National Party. Now the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. First of all, I would like to thank you, the organizers, and special thanks Mr. Jamil Maksud, he is a renowned human rights defender, but now he is unable to travel around. Ladies and gentlemen, before me, the learned academicians, politicians, human rights uh, defender, and especially uh, the senator, Flams below, he, did, he elaborated many important points. Actually, I was in, 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 in trouble. Uh, yesterday, I came to Geneva and participated in a big conference on uh, Bangladesh genocide, which was by Pakistan. Pakistan army. Ladies and gentlemen, it's known fact that all the peoples who live under Muslim regimes, their basic fundamental rights has been compromised. Whether it's Christian, Muslims, Hindus, or any person who belong any religion. But it is unfortunate the whole Muslim rulers, and especially the Pakistan, is propagating uh, the things that there is a Islamophobia. Hundreds and thousands of people lived in Europe. Uh, they are belongs to the Islam. But they did not find any kind of discriminations against them on the basis of religion. Our children, our relatives, our elders, they, they lived in uh, Europe 
peacefully and also enjoying equal rights. I did not find, found any kind of Islamophobia or on the basis of religion, any discrimination in the European countries. But it is the propaganda of Pakistan. And especially the Imran Khan, he used Islamophobia phrase in every forums. It is a false propaganda. I must denounce his finding here in Europe. There is no any kind of Islamophobia. But in Pakistan, the Christians, the Hindus, the Buddhists, and the other religious minorities, ethnic minorities, have no rights. Even our, especially the peoples of Kashmir, who lived under Pakistan, has no democratic rights, have no freedom of opinions. So any country who suppresses the right of the peoples and not honor of their faith, he has no right to, to use such kind of the phrases like Islamophobia. There is no Islamophobia. It is the Muslim rulers actually who suppress the rights of their peop own people and the women have no space they are facing worse kind of discriminations. On the other hand, it is the Pakistan and some of the Muslim countries who used religion as tool and terrorism as foreign policy. Like in Afghanistan, since 1971, it was Pakistan who formulated a strategy to put their own proxies in Afghanistan as, as a religious government. And there, there are many ups and downs because Pakistan has feared that the progressive nationalist Pashtuns or Baloch are the democratic, the, those people who believe democratic ideals and struggling for democracy in Pakistan, uh, struggling against the discriminatory laws and uh, draconian laws and all the old system, ultimately then the state suppressions put pressure on those activists, they crossed the border and took refuge in Afghanistan. So it is the Pakistan who have dual policies because the durant line the peoples, the Pashtun peoples who lived on the other, other side of Durand line. It was, you, you people know, it was a treaty. It was actually the captured areas, occupied areas by the British. Uh, and historically, it is part and parcel of the Afghanistan. Afghan nation was independent, but there are many wars in Cold War era or in early uh, 18th or 19th century. So there was one treaty and that treaty was expired in 1993. And Pakistan, since many years, actually uh, uh, try to appease many religiously motivated peoples in Afghanistan, and especially the students who provide many facilities in Pakistan, Pakistani, and, and give them the admissions. And ISI managed them. And it is in the mind of Pakistans to put, to, 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 to put a government in, in Afghanistan like a POP. Pakistan occupied Kashmir governments, which has no say. It is the Pakistani policy. And unfortunately, the whole Afghan nation is suffering due to the policy, these policies of Pakistan. They are promoting and projecting the terrorist groups, religious motivated extremist groups, and especially both the region, Afghans and Kashmir, Kashmir they are suffering due to the terrorist policies of Pakistan. In our areas, 
the terrorist infrastructure is still intact and Pakistan used them. And our area, which is known as Azad Kashmir, actually it is not Azad, it is very much occupied by Pakistan, used as launching pad for the terrorist activities on the other part of Kashmir. And interestingly, you people observe how much the brooch facing. Hundreds and thousands of people are missing in Pakistan, missing by the state, kidnapped by the states, and they have no fair trials. And ultimately, the Taliban governments, it is not only the Taliban government, it is behind the ISI and Pakistani military. They fought, they fought with the Taliban under the banner of Taliban, Taliban and captured whole Afghanistan. Now, it is the Pakistan who actually dictate the policies of the Afghan Taliban. And it is unfortunate, it is the fear of whole regions uh, because the Taliban have no face. They are not responsible people in any constitutional forum or international forum like United Nations or world community. So all the terrorist groups operating in the region is linked with Taliban and Taliban providing them a base camp in Afghanistan, got, got training and, and got all the facilities and ultimately they launched them in different areas. But the, the, the unfortunate side is the world community, United States. When United States invaded, invaded in, 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 in Afghanistan uh, in 19, uh, uh, sorry, two, 2003, uh, two, 2002, at that time, it was the prime responsibility of the world community to establish the infrastructure. But when Doha negotiations with the Taliban, it is a great mistake by the United States and all those negotiators who undermine the Ashraf Ghani governments and the civil society and the women, women rights or Afghan situations. And in hasty, United States would draw a NATO also. And they did not even feel that 20 years we are living here and still the infrastructure of Afghans who, pro who protect the life, liberty and the property of the Afghan people should be protected. But now there is mess. There is a, a gross human rights violation, especially the women have no any rights, even right to get education or go to street. Of Taliban imposed very strict impositions in, 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 in the Afghan women and, and the, those peoples who actually um, uh, associates with the human rights organization or liberal ideals, now they are facing worst kind of persecutions. Now it is the duty, the world community, and especially the influential countries who can put pressure on Pakistan and ask them to put pressure on Afghanistan because Afghanistan, uh, the, the Taliban is not an independent force. And now the United States also declared that it is Pakistan who provide shelters, harbor them, and finance them. So, so it is now to all that it is Pakistan who installed Taliban. And Taliban, one, one thing we should more understand that it is not one entity. There are many groups under the umbrella of Taliban in the guise of Taliban. And their credential is promote religious extremism and and although if it is debatable whether they are true representative of the religion or 
they have drive a narrative in the 20 uh, in 13th and the 12th century so it is debatable all the secular muslims are moderate muslims did not subscribe the ideology of talba but their regimes like like in pakistan the establishment and the pakistani government in saudi arabia and everywhere you can find they are always providing all kind of assistance to those who are extremist radical and uh, militant because they don't want that civil society can emerge and independently put, um, build a narrative for the democracy for secularism for uh, for for the the, uh, the 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 peoples and every kind of discrimination that's why the rulers the muslim rulers they are not ready to give the democrat uh, democratic rights to their own people but they are uh, always propagating and abusing world community and the other religions so at this point when the terrorism and extremism is spreading in the name of taliban we should formulate a strategy what community should 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 formulate a strategy how to combat this and how to stop them for spreading extremism and terrorism uh, actually uh, i i tender my apology because uh, i prepared a, a, a some notes and unfortunately it it is at my uh, resident and uh, i am in geneva so i i i cannot graduate you in the context of uh, today uh, title uh, but uh, i must pay my gratitude to all those who actually before uh, spoke uh, to the conference uh, their findings uh, their narratives regarding today's conference is absolutely right and i endorse and agree with their finding i thank you very much thank you for jamil maksud and the organizers sajad uh, sajid abasi and uh, other participants i thank you very much again कुछ भी सुनाई नहीं दे रहा Yes, please. Mr. Dinesh Kumar Qureshi, the floor is yours now. Please go ahead. Okay, I, I, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, because we, I, I couldn't hear you, so I, I, I didn't know that you, uh, that you gave me the floor. But thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, Jamil Maksud. Thank you for organizing this, uh, this conference, and of course a very timely. Uh, time uh first of all i would like to also express uh my support and sympathies to you for uh the fact that you are of course restricted in your activities because of the revocation of your passport um i've been told that you have uh, you're fighting this case legally in the islamabad high court uh and i'm sure that uh 
it will be taken to its logical conclusion and we can then meet you again in places like Geneva uh, where we raise these issues. Um, well, uh, thank you to all the speakers. I think everyone has made very valid points. Um, I, Mr. Shogat Kashmiri spoke about Islamophobia, uh, so I will not touch that topic. I think he has uh, uh, elaborated that in a very, very good way. Um, I will mainly focus a little bit on, on, on what has been told as the, as the title of this, of this conference is Growing Extremism in the region, of course, after the Taliban has taken over. What I do find um, necessary to say here is that after so many years, it seems that Europe has still not learned its lessons because the thing is that Taliban is not a new phenomena. Taliban was in power in 1996. Taliban started emerging in Pakistan in the end of the 80s, in the beginning of the 90s. And it came out as a powerful group controlling almost 90% of Afghanistan in 1996. And except for some statements made by European countries about human rights and women rights in Afghanistan and also in the US, not much was done. Afghanistan was left to the Taliban from 1996 until 2001, until 9-11 happened. It took 9-11 for Europe and the West to wake up. And then it was too late. So uh, now 20 years later, of course, the senator and others have expressed their views about fears of, of, of terrorism growing in the region and also in, in Europe. Um, but will Europe sit silent again? Will it wait for another 9-11? It shouldn't. What needs to be, um, you know, Europe could learn from the experiences we Kashmiris have. Um, and maybe Europe could step in before it hits places like Brussels and Paris and Amsterdam. Maybe history can teach us a lesson because I, I said it a few days ago in the UN as well, uh, Soviets left Afghanistan somewhere in 1989. And in 1989, uh, a terrorist group like the Hezbollah Mujahideen was founded. In 1987, lashkar e Toiba was founded in Pakistan. And all these groups, imposed terrorism, death and destruction on us Kashmiris, especially the Kashmiris living in the Indian administered part of Jammu and Kashmir. And like earlier was said by Mr. Kash Shogat Kashmiri, is that the uh, Pakistan administered part of Kashmir was used as a launching pad. And nobody cared. No European stood up in the 1990s. No American stood up in the 1990s telling the world or telling uh, the powers to be that the Kashmiris are being uh, killed by intelligence agencies in Pakistan by using proxies as terrorist organizations. So you, I think the West can learn from our experiences. And since the last 30 years, the average Kashmiri has been fighting terrorism has been demanding their rightful rights, their rightful human rights, while trying to disassociate itself from this imposed uh, exported from Rawalpindi and Islamabad. And now the fear is again the same, because then it was the Soviets who left, now it's the Americans who have left. So where will these terrorists go? And of course, I understand the concerns of, of, of the people sitting in Brussels. But Brussels is very far away. The, the Kashmiris have the first fears. The people living in Indian administered Kashmir, the people living in places in Pakistan, the people living in India, the people living in Afghanistan, those are the first targets. And we fear that because of the fact that the Pakistan military establishment would not like these terrorist groups to destabilize Pakistan itself, that history will repeat itself and these people will be rerouted to Kashmir again in order to 
um, like they did in the 80s, in the end of the 80s, by, you know, their mantra of bleeding India with a thousand cuts of so-called trying to liberate Kashmir from infidels, all these mantras which they have used for, for terrorist organizations and to befool the international community and, 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 and the Kashmiris itself. So we are the first line of, uh, in the first line of fire um, before they come to, come to Europe. Uh, recently, there was a statement by the Taliban spokesman who said that he has, the Taliban has the right to speak about all Muslims, including Kashmir. We have nothing to do with the Taliban. We, 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 do, we, we don't share anything with them. And I think the majority of the Afghans don't share anything with them. But this, again, is going to be imposed on the Kashmiri people. And I think that the best protection, the best protection Europe and the West can do to protect itself is stand with the people, the democratic, secular forces in the region, especially in the conflict zones like Jammu and Kashmir, who oppose terrorism, who oppose the Taliban, because that is your best protection. You cannot build walls around Brussels and Paris. The only thing you need to do is to support those people in these regions to build walls to keep this terrorism out of their lands. That is where we need the help of the Western community and the Western people. Because you want to prevent terrorism from taking root. You don't want to cure a terrorist attack because then you're already too late. It, it has happened. So what we what we want from you, from, from, from powers to be, is to keep um, highlighting the fact that today the Taliban has taken over. It is a force to be reckoned with. It is supported by uh, the benefactor next door, the state of Pakistan. It is supported by the military establishment. It is now almost fully in power. Um, and when we hear things about we must not recognize them, yeah, we, we legitimize them with the Doha talks. We legitimize them by making a peace deal with a terrorist organization. You know, we nobody, uh, the Afghan government of Ashraf Ghani was sidelined. Nobody asked Ghani anything. Eventually, he had to flee. But we legit, it, it can't be this. This can't be the reality that we have. The West has legitimized the Taliban on the Afghan people and are now talking about not accepting them and boycotting them. I think that's not going to the root of the root of the of the cause. I think what you need to do is you need to sanction. You need to sanction, you need to use punitive measures against states who sponsor terrorism. Boycotting the Taliban and, and, and not working together with them, I don't know whether that's the right decision. I think we need to keep engaging with democratic and secular forces in Afghanistan. We need to keep working for women's rights. We need to keep working for human rights there. And at the same time, we need to look at the root cause. And the root cause is the mindset of the military establishment sitting in Rahul Pindi. And maybe it's now time to use punitive leverages against such countries who support uh, terrorism and who use it as a state policy uh, in order to gain uh, strategic depth or you know, to, to safeguard their strategic interest in the region. That will not only help Europe, that will also help the Kashmiri people and make it more uh, make it more clearer to the world that the Kashmiris are fighting for their rights and they are not terrorists because this this our whole rights movement have been hijacked by uh, imposing terrorism on us. So what we what we really need to do look at now is move forward from just condemning and words. We need to sanction, we need to the, the FATF, uh, has put the the state of Pakistan on a gray list for so many years because it's being protected by its by its elder brother China in the FATF. Well, we need to move forward from there. 
They need to maybe be blacklisted. We need to we need to establish um, commissions or maybe uh, uh, investigative committees who look into how it's possible that with trillions of dollars, with the mightiest force, armed forces in the world, how is it possible that the Taliban came back 20 years later? That cannot have no terrorist organization can support itself for a long time until and unless it is supported and nourished by a state. A terrorist organization needs money, needs weapons. Where do they get it from? No, no, you know, nobody can support uh, paying their bills if you don't have a job. You know, no terrorist organization can flourish this way unless and until it has a state backing them. And that is the root cause. So that is where we need to move towards while also acknowledging the fact that there are other sufferers apart from the Afghan. The Afghan people have been suffering for 40 years. The Kashmiri people have been suffering for 75 years. The first terrorist attack in the region was the invasion of Jammu and Kashmir. And since then, we have been looking towards it. For the West, maybe the first terrorist attack was 9-11. Well, that's 50 years after 1947. Since then, we have been bearing the brunt in the region of these terrorists. And now it's the time for the world to also stand apart from the Afghans, to also stand with the people of Kashmir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Janet Reshi, for your comprehensive statement on and the contemporary political and security situation evolving uh, around the region and around the globe. And uh, you have rightly endorsed the point that uh, we were the first victim of uh, a proxy war, uh, which was started and inflicted on us in 1947. And now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Nasser Aziz Khan, is a central spokesperson of United Kashmir People's National Party. The floor is yours, sir, now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good day, respected panelists and participants. I congratulate Comrade Jamil Maksud and uh, Sajid Hossein organizing such an important event on important topic. Entire world is concerned and talking about the situation and what is happening in Afghanistan. And everybody is concerned that uh, possible spillover of extremism and terrorism will affect not only the South Asian region, but entire world. First of all, we would have to understand that Taliban, radical Islam, this extremism, terrorism is an ideology which was systematically promoted by Pakistan and some other Islamic states. As we know that in late 70s, Pakistan and other Islamic countries gathered extremists and terrorist groups across the globe. They used them against Soviet Union. Then Soviet Union withdraw from Afghanistan, these groups were fighting with each other. They gained power in 1996. And at that time, Pakistan said that we brought like-minded people in power. And they were glorifying that Taliban are our assets. In an interview with BBC, Parvez Musharraf, military dictator of Pakistan said, that Taliban, Lashkar Taiba, Lashkar Jangvi, and all extremist groups, they are our assets, and we can use them against any country or any in any part of the world. We know that Pakistan has been playing a double game with the international community. On the one hand, she said that she is the ally on war on terror of US and NATO, but on the other hand, she was supporting these Al-Qaeda groups, Taliban and all other extremist groups. Hassanullah Hassan, Taliban spokesperson, he was captured 
he was in military custody and he was given facility to give interview live interviews to mainstream media of pakistan for two to three hours and ultimately he escaped from custody and nobody is talking about because pakistan in pakistan there is a strict restrictions on freedom of expression media is under threat newspapers they are facing worst type of harassment nobody can dare to speak about the rule of law in the country against these extremist groups when taliban came into power again in 15 august 2021 and pakistani sitting minister defense analyst and other groups they are glorifying them and they are saying that we defeated united states and nato in afghanistan and taliban came into power and this is our great victory pakistani foreign minister shahab mukreshi said that we are seriously thinking to give amnesty to all taliban groups ttt pakistan ttp pakistan and taliban who are in power now in afghanistan western countries nato united states they must consider it seriously because pakistan is always promoted still promoting and these all talibans who are in power in afghanistan they got education from this radical and extremist ideology from pakistani madrasas especially from akora khatak and they taught them hatred and they are still teaching them hatred and in state of jammu and kashmir there are banned extremist groups they are freely roaming and they have they are interlinked with taliban and extremist groups now they are stretching their muscles and they are glorifying taliban's victory in afghanistan and we have fear that pakistan might start another proxy war in state of jammu and kashmir one can understand that amarat e islami afghanistan flag were hoisted in red mask in islamabad and state and police was silent on 19 august is the national day of the afghan people and they were celebrating their national day in peshawar but police forced to hoist their flag national flag and they snatch flags from these people afghan people who were celebrating their national independence day it shows that pakistan is promoting radical groups and they are trying to victimize every secular progressive afghan every person who is living in south asia who is believe in peace humanity and coexistence they are under threat due to the policies of pakistan international community should intervene because united states and nato pledged billion of dollars to pakistan to fight on terror pakistan was saying that she is supporting nato and united states but this is an open secret that bin laden was hiding in aftabad only few hundred meters away from the military academy in a four floor building more than dozen til- children two three wives servants and pakistan said that they were unaware that bin laden is hiding here many other taliban top leaders they were eliminated on pakistani soil and if we read the books of the ex military men of pakistan and many other right right wingers they openly claiming that we supported taliban we created them we support them and we will continue our support to them i will not much time i am very grateful to all of you for uh, your comprehensive presentation everybody spoke very well on this topic and uh, we the people of state of jammu and kashmir accept expect that international community will intervene in this matter and make pakistan accountable and ask pakistan to stop promoting and exporting terrorism in the region i thank you mr chair 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nasser Aziz Khan, for talking so loudly and comprehensively uh, on all aspects. Uh, now, I would also like to inform you that today is the third anniversary of our late senior vice chairperson, Madam Naila Khanin. She was uh, a very strong and brave uh, party leader. She died on 30th of September 9, 2018 after falling a short illness. The United Kashmir People's National Party is uh, paying glowing tribute for her uh, courageous struggle to organize party in the length and breadth of uh, uh, Pakistani occupied Kashmir and also in the various cities of Pakistan where Kashmiris are uh, domiciled. And she was a very staunch supporter of uh, women rights, child rights, and she was against all sorts of uh, discrimination, whether it is based on uh, religion, on culture, on languages, on ethnicities. And she has been standing with the Pakistani minorities group, ethnic groups in Rawalpindi and in Islamabad and has been a part of a progressive polity of uh, uh, Kashmiris and the people of Jammu and Kashmir uh, living in Pakistan as well. So we we are paying a rich tribute for her courageous struggle, her uh, her work across uh, the region, and she was uh, an icon among the women uh, political activists uh, in the in the area. Uh, the women from even. And the poor Pakistani groups uh, were very close to her and uh, they keep uh, admiring her courageous stance uh, for the unification of the state of uh, Jammu and Kashmir and for the inception of uh, fundamental human rights, uh, especially uh, infringed under the occupation of Pakistan. Uh, so now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Sajid Hussain, is the uh, Secretary of Information for the United Kashmir People's National Party. Your zone, the floor is your now. Thank you. Hello. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm grateful to the leadership of UK PMP and EU today, which has taken a timely initiative to discuss the rising threat of extremism in South Asia with very diverse and distinguished panel. When we discuss rising threat of extremism in South Asia, this is very important to know root causes of extremism in South Asia. The partition of British India on the basis of religion and two-nation theory is the root cause of extremism in South Asia. The state of Jammu and Kashmir was officially founded on 16th of March, 1846, under the Treaty of Amritsar between Maharaja Gulab Singh and the British East India Company. Jammu Kashmir was one of the largest princely state outside of British India. The Governor General of Pakistan has signed stand still agreement with the ruler of Jammu and Kashmir on 12 August 1947. Pakistan started a military expedition in Jammu and Kashmir under Operation Gulmarg in Jammu and Kashmir and Operation Datahel in Kalkit, Pakistan. The tribesmen were equipped, trained and transported by Pakistani military invaded in Jammu and Kashmir on 22nd of October 1947. Those who entered our state start indiscriminate killing of innocent people. India and Pakistan fought three wars over the Jammu and Kashmir in 1947 and 1965 and a limited conflict in 1919. The people of Jammu and Kashmir has been suffering from conflict for the last six decades and terrorism and extremism emerged as a result of this conflict. The Taliban has taken over almost all of the Afghanistan and is flexing its muscle for global legitimacy. Despite continued international pressure, the Taliban has so far failed to appoint any women in their cabinet. Their failure to do so exacerbates concern about significant deterioration in women rights under the new regime. Especially 
after the new government announced that secondary school would resume for male students only while claiming that female students will be able to return in the near future. No public explanation has been provided for why girls have been prevented from uh, resuming their education. In addition, the majority of women in the public sector have not been allowed to return to the work. Our main concern is that their rule in Afghanistan may affect the situation in Jammu and Kashmir. Many international experts apprehended that Taliban may fuel terror activities in Jammu and Kashmir by sending its fighter or by training Pakistani missionaries. Some leaders of Pakistan's ruling party have also said on television that the Taliban would come warmly welcome the ta Taliban come and fight uh, Taliban would come and fight for them in JNK. The Taliban who released from prison in Afghanistan have been warmly welcomed by the religious and extremists in POK. However, there are extremist elements in Pakistan who are fueling terrorism in Kashmir purely for personal interest. These elements are called closely connect to Pakistan's ISI as well as their army. They may resort to recruit a fresh cadres from Kashmiri students and residents of Pakistani occupied Kashmir. Also, various terror organizations like Lashkar e Taiba and Jash e Muhammad have well established recruitment cells in Pakistan occupied Kashmir, from where they have been recruiting terrorists in past two. Pakistan may utilize the support of Taliban in training terror recruits and later push them in Jammu and Kashmir. The United States Department, US State Department listed three Islamic groups activities in Kashmir as a foreign terrorist organization, Harkatul Mujahideen, jash e Muhammad, and lashkar e Taiba. Pakistan Premier, Premier Intelligence Service, uh, Inter-Service Intelligence of arming, training, and providing logistical support to militants in Kashmir. The Al-Qaeda connections, many terrorist activities in Kashmir receive training in the same madrasas or Muslim seminaries, seminaries where Taliban and Al-Qaeda fighters studied. And some received military training at camps in Taliban ruled Afghanistan. Leader of some of these terror groups also have Al-Qaeda connections. The long-term time leader of Harkat al-Mujahideen group Fazlur Rahman Khalil signed Al-Qaeda 1998 declaration of holy war with, um, called, which called on Muslims to attack all Americans and all their allies. Mulana Masood Azhar, who founded the Jashe Muhammad organization, traveled to Afghanistan several times to meet Osama bin Laden. As our group is suspected of receiving funding, uh, Al Qaeda US official says. In 2006, Al Qaeda claimed to have established a wing in Kashmir. Two faces of terrorism in the name of religion. Religion is used for the instigation of terrorism by two sets of actors in Pakistan. The two sets are somewhat interrelated, but show certain differences with respect to, to their objectives. Areas of uh, um, cooperation and targets of violence. First, there are sectarian group um, belonging to Sunnis and Shia sect of Islam that are active in terror activities, which are mostly, but not exclusively directly against the people from the opposite sect. The Sunni militant organization call for Pakistan to be declared a Sunni state, while Shias fight for specific political fight or to safeguard their distinct status. The second set of actors are Sunni jihadi group that were considered by the government of Pakistan up to 2001 as strategic tools to be used in Afghanistan and in Jammu and Kashmir as well. Many of the jihadi group that were active in Jammu and Kashmir in insurgency after Afghan jihad, Deobandi, that have become the most important in connection with terrorism and that also have significant interconnections. Effect of terrorism. So uh, the rising level of violence have been proved a difficult challenge of people of Jammu and Kashmir. Ironically, far from being able to scare civilians against terror attacks, the police force itself is, is particularly vulnerable to attack by well-trained and highly motivated terrorists. Social disorder, instability have been the result, adversely affecting the economy of the 
country over the years however the effect was to change the change the whole contest of insurgency from freedom struggle to jihad and the pro freedom insurgents indigenous movement become marginalized and comparison with the jihadi group that support kashmir and extension to pakistan among the group that are active in insurgency the most Im important uh, are hizbul mujahideen harkatul mujahideen jash e mohammed and lashkar e taiba due to international pressure extremist organization in pakistan can be diverted into a social work in the name of um, islam rather than of jihad this is the new form of rising threat of extremism in south asia in the name of social work particularly in pakistan and its jammu and kashmir Dear friends, I would like to draw your attention to an important issue that the people, the citizens of the state of Jammu and Kashmir are facing and are being affected by these uh, acts of criminals and rascals. The citizens of the state of Jammu and Kashmir travel from Kashmir to Pakistan or from Pakistan to Kashmir via Tain Dal Court Road. Then their vehicles are looted with the force of a gun. During their journey, they are killed, they are beaten, they are abused, and they are injured, they are tortured, and this attitude is intolerable. Pakistan has completely failed to protect the citizens of Jammu and Kashmir during the January and all the criminals are roaming around freely and openly and all the people who commit the crime are not punished. We urge upon the international community and all international organizations to take cognizance and put pressure to Pakistan to resolve the issue and ensure safety, security, and dignity of the citizens of the state of Jammu and Kashmir and protect their life, liberty, and property. And at last, a tribute to Naila Hanen. Naila Hanen was a leader of UK PMP, and she was a precious asset of United Kashmir People's National Party. She rendered invaluable service for the mission of United States of Jammu and Kashmir. Her name would be remembered. She was committed to her work and was a thorough gentlewoman. She, was, she has spreaded the UKPMP ideology and conveyed the message of UKPMP across the world, the world, particularly in Pakistani occupied Jammu and Kashmir. She was the symbol of resistance movement of UKPMP between 2012 to 2018 and left deep impression of her commitment and hard work, including leadership abilities. She was very brave and paragon of action and sincerity with UKPMP struggle for the united and independent Jammu and Kashmir. She will be remembered as a committed leader of UKPMP. She will be remembered for the anti-establishment role she played in agitating for political, economic, social, culture, and women rights and democracy. Her energy and lifelong dedication to improve the life and livelihood of people of Jammu and Kashmir will continue to inspire generation of the young people around the world. We all pay our rich tribute to her. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Sajid Hussain, uh, uh, elaborating various aspects and how uh, the growing menace of uh, terrorism is affecting uh, life, uh, liberty, of the people in the in the region and particularly under the illegal occupation of Pakistan, I would like to uh, to share one important uh, <coughs> news that came from the region uh, two days before. Uh, there are few refugees camps in Pakistani occupied Kashmir. The people who were migrated uh, during this proxy war and. Uh, um, death and destruction game after 90s from Indian administrative part to Pakistani occupied Kashmir. And now the security establishment is using them again and two men, namely Tanvir Bhatt and Zarar Khan, who were given arms and ammunition to transport them to Indian administrative Kashmir. So they were apprehended at the border and eventually they were killed. Uh, in the firing. So uh, we are requesting international community to take this cognizance since uh, Pakistan and its uh, security agencies and military forces and extremist groups are inspired by the Taliban takeover of Kabul. Now they are pushing uh, these people who were migrated from Indian part to Pakistani part to go back and to play a role of a guide or to to play a role of a porter uh, for them to, to take arms, 
money, illegal sims, which are registered in Pakistan, but they can be easily used in India uh, for uh, terrorism activities. So this is a very alarming situation which is evolving in our region. Now I would like to invite uh, uh, once again Sadar Shabat Ali Kashmiri uh, to pay tribute to Madam Naila Khanin Saiba on her third anniversary. The floor is yours sir, now. I thank you again, all of you. Uh, it was a wonderful deliberation of all speakers and uh, shed light on the current situation of our regions. No doubt, our region is under attack. Attack by extremists, attack by radical groups, and terrorists. Anyhow, it is the duty of the regional governments to combat and uh, eliminate all those extremist view which is prevailing in our society. Uh, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> Madam Naila Khani was a great lady she leads the rights movement of the Kashmiri peoples, irrespective of what's their color, creed, and religion. She was not a narrow nationalist, she was an internationalist and believe in, in internationalism and fight for the rights of not only the Kashmiri peoples, but she stood with the Baloch victims, she stood with the Pashtun nationalist and progressive uh, people, and all over the world, her ideals was progressive, liberal, democratic, and anti-colonialism. Although we, the people of Kashmir, is facing colonial, colonial era's policies. It is the colonial policies to divide and rule and ultimately to create the conflicts and serve these conflicts to their industry, uh, 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 weapon industry. Uh, and now we again actually facing those policies which were formulated in Cold War era, and we are the first victim of the Cold War era policies, and still that policies is continue in our areas. And it is the Naila Khani. She stood against all those policies which was based on terror, uh, terrorism, extremism, communalism, and also discriminatory and draconian laws. And I must say, a tribute to her sacrifices. And of course, we miss the Lord. She remained in our heart and minds. And all United Kashmir People's National Party workers, and especially those who internationally struggling for, uh, for the rights of the people, international human rights defenders, they also pay tribute to the sacrifices of Naila Khanin, and she was our leader, and she still remains in our heart and mind. I thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you, you have hold a very wonderful uh, conference, and I must pay a, a, a gratitude to your efforts. I thank you again. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Now the floor is open and uh, we have uh, some uh, friends here. 
if you have any question you you can raise a question in in urdu language or in in english as you feel comfortable or if you want to say something uh, you are you are also invited to uh, to express your views सरदार नासिर अजीज खान ने हाथ खड़ा थैंक यू सर इट्स ओके आप ऑन म्यूट करें ना ओके ओके थैंक यू सर जस्ट आई वांट टू गो टू पास्ट Uh, about uh, the pashtun region there is one province in pakistan in the one country in afghanistan there is majority is pashtun before the 79 78 our pashtun was 100% secular people our tradition there is no militant there is no religion like now just the pakistan no relation with america when he make the program with europe european also he make the program with the against the soviet union and he bring the mullahism the terrorism he open the madrasa the school for the terrorism and for the religion who rep- who repent the money for this just america europe in he sponsor this now we all region is going to wear to the war who inject the terrorism there just america in europe support this in inject this area now we demand okay this was war with the two capitalism and the socialism okay this is the past now we request to the europe and to the america to de inject this madrasa this school of terrorism and we should request we we are request to this uh, community the west community to de de inject this the uh, the terrorist So we should become the normal people we don't live there the normal people there is don't there is the many group explain our kashmiri friend all there is many group in who who support that just we request to the western community the western people to de inject to we become the normal that we was before in 1977 78 thank you very much <clears throat> thank you uh, mr ramanulla for your uh, your question and comments and i would like to, uh, mr andy to respond to your question thank you first of all um, thank you for your comment because this is really interesting comments uh, i know uh, united states and europe before they fueled uh, the taliban uh, they fueled also the madrasas before uh, this was a policy against the soviet union Uh, I know that the Pashtuns have suffered a lot also. Sometimes they don't have the right to talk their own language. Sometimes they, they get papers from the Afghan state. They don't get it in their own language. I think we should support the struggle of the um, Pashtun. And it's true that before the Pashtun were uh, uh, a secular movement, they became uh, an Islamic movement because of the support of uh, of the uh, ancient leaders of uh, uh, united states and 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 also uh, with the still little support of europe also but before we if we talk about the taliban they were always fueled by europe and united states if we think about it but because be, before the taliban became in power now they were fueling the drugs uh, the opium uh, before they were in, in support of the opium so they always had the money and if you have the money you can come in power it's as easy as that so they always had the power eh? uh, this opium is needed by the western countries they need it in their hospitals they need it in the united states they need it everywhere so actually we had before 
we were still supporting this Taliban. We didn't just, we didn't, it doesn't look like this, but before they were supported already because they got the power to, to, to have this opium and we need it in all of the world. So Afghanistan is really important. So I understand what you're saying. And it's a fault of the, of, of the past. They made big uh, disasters. And the big disaster in Afghanistan that we always had foreign powers occupying Afghanistan. And they are still occupied now. They are still occupied. When the uh, Pakistan government uh, was involved in creating this new Taliban government, we had the, the boss of IC uh, who was there informing this new Taliban government. So, they are always occupied by foreign states. There should be free elections in Afghanistan. There should be a free democratic party system in Afghanistan. But there is always this powers from abroad who want to get uh, Pakistan, uh, who want to get Afghanistan. Next to that, we also have these important copper mines in Afghanistan. Uh, they are the most important uh, copper mines in the world. There is nowhere such a big copper mine field anywhere in the world. Afghanistan is needed for that. So there are also foreign powers fighting to get the support of the Afghanistan new leadership to get these copper mines. And we see China is doing a lot. Taliban already said that they wouldn't do anything against the Uyghur movement. The Uyghur repression, sorry. Because they will be supported by, um, by China. So we see also the China-Pakistan economic corridor. So we see uh, we will have these big investments of China uh, into the thing. So I'm afraid that we will still fuel, uh, other powers will fuel this um, Taliban movement. And I'm afraid for the future of Afghanistan because if, if they don't have free elections, I think there will be, uh, the problems will stay because they will stay occupied, not by the United States, but by Pakistan now. <coughs> Thank you very much for uh, your response to Mr. Ramanul Khan. So any one of you, if you have any question, comments? ز خواه کل نوبل رحمان لانا من انا کم چه زیدی کانفرانس تا دعوت کردم و دلت رزانه سر را وستم دا افغانستان مساله داشت داد چه دا آمریکا و اروپا تول هوادونه چی کم دی دوی با افغانستان کی یه وادسی خونالای لو با اکلا چه همه چه دپاسا شپگ میلون افغانان و جلا و همه وس افغانستان خالق او افغانستان یوازی پر خوده نه طالبان د اپیمون سوپر پاور جوړ شوی ده او نه طالبان سوپر پاور وو او نه ده دا د امریکی او د ناټو میشتو هیوادونو د پاکستان په ملاتړ باندې د طالبانو نه سوپر پاور جوړ کړی نن سبا ا there is a 6 million Afghan killed in this war in last uh, 40 years. Uh, and now uh, there is, he is not, he cannot uh, become a power with a film or drugs. Uh, in the European and America, the Afghan live alone in this war and we were suffer many, uh, 60 million people, 6 million people uh, killed in this war from uh, against the Soviet Union until now. خبره بیت دیر واضح هست از افغانستان تو خلق پدی پویی که آمریکا و اروپا میشته و دنوا پا افغانستان که کمالو با اکلا داک دچین سر جغرا دا یا دروس سر جنگ و جغرا و داد دوید مفادو لپارا پتا باندی د طالبانو سر داد دوی مذاکرات شروع کرد او افغان دولتی که جور کرده مم دویو ام دوی پیتاوانم کرده و دیر پسی پیلگا ولی بی خود افغان دولتی بی خبر ابری خود او د طالبانو سر اید پاکستان پترو دارک خبری و کلی که ناست وار سر آب افغانستانی از لیبیا د تباهی و بربادی کنده توار وار زاو. He said that. Ah, thank you. 
we said that uh, uh, we were we were killed uh, for the um, capitalism like that for the system of the um, CPEC with the China in uh, the uh, European Union in America uh, talk with uh, without government of Ghani just talk with him and he leave the, the government of Ghani alone and we know the uh, America and Europe play with us just for the something but he don't think for humanity just uh, uh, he uh, play the game for the CPEC or for some opportunity. او د افغانستان خلک اوس پوهیږي چې دا جګړه د چا وه او امریکا او ناټو میشتو هیوادونو ولې د افغانستان سره دومره خطرناکه لوبه وکړه هی اسک وای د ورلډ پلی ویت اس لایک دیټ ان د لیو الون د لیو الون اس ان افغانستان ان هی سپورټ لایک طالبان سمثینګ یا yeah, it's a it's a very tough question that uh, why did they play with uh, the Afghani people? I think this is interest is interests of the United States, interests of the Soviet Union, interest of different parts of the world um, that they played with the people. But it also was also were always funded. The, the wars were all, always funded because you can't make war without funding. Somebody said here that um, uh, terrorists cannot play a role without state funding. There was always state funding. There was uh, an Afghan uh, uh, ISIS uh, organization who was uh, funded by the former Afghanistan government. And there was also the real ISIS. So you always have this funded uh, wars there. And one of the most important things that they don't say in public is this resources that are still there in, in Afghanistan. That's one of the most important things that they want these resources because the world is in need of these resources. So that's one of the things. So I'm really a pity for all the Afghani people that they always had to suffer, that they always had to live in war. They, 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 they never had, uh, in the last 20 years, they never had the time without war. They are used to live in this kind of war in this kind of thing. And now they are a victim again. And until there is no free system in Afghanistan, there is no free elections, there is no thing, it will stay like this. The Afghans should take the power in their hands. And a lot of people think that the Taliban, as a nationalist movement, is already giving the power to the Afghans. But that's the problem. A lot of people are unaware that they are supported by Pakistan. So that's one of the themes. So another, an, another reason is that um, um, they use Afghanistan to fund terrorism. They use Afghanistan before the Al Haqqani network. Eh? Everybody was formed by them. They were sending terrorists around the world. This was actually the education camp of terror cells in the world. Eh? We were only aware about this. I think a lot of intelligence services were aware of before, but we, as the world community, were only aware about this after uh, 11 September. Uh, before, we were not aware. And it's a pity. And I want to say sorry to all the people of Afghanistan that they have to live in this sort of circumstances. I really feel a pity for these people, for the women, for the children, for everybody who lost somebody in, in this last uh, uh, 20 years and before. I really feel a pity for the Afghan people because they were always used as a chess game against each other. There was always done this with these people. I really feel sorry. And I want on behalf of me as a, a human rights act activist for Postversa, uh, excuse me for what happened with the Afghani people all this time. We can never, uh, I can, we can never excuse uh, these governments who've done all this suffering to all the Afghani people. But we have to see that there will come new suffering. There will come new uh, economic exploitation from, the, from China into Afghanistan. You will see this. So this is happening already. They are making deals already. So the people of Afghanistan will be sold again to China now. So China and Pakistan playing a big role there. So they are always in this big war between world powers. So I'm sorry for all the people of Afghanistan, that they had to suffer so much and that they still have to suffer now. I'm sorry for that. Um,
Yes, now. Yeah, yeah, just, just yeah. Mouse, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you so much for your questions. And uh, as uh, Mr. Andy said, so we we are we we are we show solidarity with you. We support you, and we believe that uh, we need to support what the EU and the US should do is supporting the democratic and the secular forces, and supporting women, especially because this is the values of of um, uh, of Europe is supporting human rights, women's rights, freedom of speech. Uh, uh, and um, uh, actually, uh, uh, former um, uh, mayor of Afghanistan, Mrs. Zarifa Ghaffari, was uh, visiting uh, France uh, uh, last week, I mean, a, a few weeks ago. And she was supported also by, by the mayor of France, uh, the mayor of Paris. Uh, I believe we need to support these people, these secular forces, these women, these leaders. Uh, and as Andy said, uh, people believe that this is the Taliban takeover the Taliban took power, and this is what uh, people have chosen. No, this is not what people, what the Afghani people have chosen. They didn't vote for uh, extremist uh, people. And as you said, um, the Afghani people are not extremists, but this is, uh, it was a process of radicalization. So what the US and the EU should do is to work on de-radicalization in Afghanistan and in these areas, because this is what we need to do to prevent event happening uh, terrorist attacks here in Europe or um, uh, everywhere in the world. So we need to work together on uh, de-radicalization, -radi human rights, women rights without frontiers, uh, freedom of speech, and support the secular forces. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. If uh, any speaker is left, let me check who is online. Who is there? Uh, okay, uh, so uh, I would uh, like to give floor to Mr. Nasr Aziz Khan uh, for his uh, final remarks, please. The, the, the floor uh, is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just wanted to add a few points. Actually, when Ahmed Karzai was the Prime Minister, uh, President of uh, Afghanistan, he had support from US and NATO, and he was people were calling that he is the mayor of Kabul, he is not the president of Afghanistan, but he sustained because he got aerial and ground support from uh, United States and NATO. What happened now recent with Ashraf Ghani government when they start, start, uh, start uh, talk in Doha? Ashraf Ghani government were given a list of 5,500 top extremist Taliban leaders. And they were forced to release these extremists from the jails, from different jails in Afghanistan. And things rapidly changed when they were released and they start capturing Af Afghanistan. And second thing, there was the biometric devices. US was collecting data of Afghan people. And especially those who were working with United States and NATO. And when US left Afghanistan in hurry, they left these devices there. They left sophisticated weapons in the hands of Taliban. And now Pakistan and China, they are getting these weapon on very like they are spending pennies to get these sophisticated weapons. Question arises if US and NATO was the ally of Afghan government, they should consult with them. They should not force them to release these extremist groups. And we stand with common Afghan people. We extend our solidarity to every secular progressive Afghan person, especially women and girls who are the victim of radical and extremist policies of Taliban in Pakistan. It is the prime responsibility of United States and NATO to undo their mistakes, what they did in recent past. What happened in late 80s, 90s, that is the past. Many things ha has happened, but what they did recently in Doha and after this rapid capture of Afghanistan, fall of Kabul, they should consider it seriously and 
play their role to protect common Afghan people who are the victim of terrorism and extremism. I thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Before uh, ending uh, this uh, conference today, I would like to present a few of uh, resolutions for your kind attention. Uh, it, these are the resolutions come, came from Pakistani administrative Kashmir and from the various uh, organizations uh, representing uh, Kashmiri diaspora and also from the United Kashmir People's National Party and uh, Jammu Kashmir International People's Alliance. So I would like to present the first resolution. Kashmir studies must be taught at schools as it is enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and International Convention on Civil and Political Rights that the students must be taught their local history, culture, poetry, and everything surrounded around their native homeland. So it is the basic right of every child under the administration of Pakistan to study in study the history of his and her native region. We reiterate that every ply shall be countered to divide Jammu and Kashmir on religious lines. Restrictions on media, journalists, academia, human rights activists, and especially online propaganda must be discouraged. All such human rights abusers should be criminalized who openly eulogize extremism and terrorism online. Local parties' elections must be held in Pakistan administered Kashmir, and women must be given 33% representation as per the law. State subject law in Gilgit Baltistan must be revived and the land rights of the people must be recognized as disputed region. Various reports of land grabbing by Pakistani military in Pakistan administrated Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan are very much disturbing and such activities of the military must be discouraged. Travelers from Pakistan to Pakistani administrated Kashmir and from Pakistani administrated Kashmir to Pakistan must be provided adequate security so that they could travel without any fear of harassment and intimidation since these people have no any other opportunity, any other country to go. Their first and foremost destination would always remain as Pakistan to go abroad or to stay in Pakistan. So I present this resolution for your kind acceptance. Thank you very much for today's uh, conference, your participation, your contribution. And we hope that uh, we shall formulate, uh, we shall draft uh, a memorandum uh, and that will be presented to external action service, various committees of uh, the European Parliament and uh, to the different uh, diplomatic missions in Brussels and across the world. So I... I, I just wanted to uh, ask for one little amendment, if yes, it's possible. Yes, please. Uh, because uh, the, power, oh, the power to the women, 33%, oh, uh, it would be good to work to 50% of the women that it's like uh, here that we could could start it. Yes. If that is possible. Yes, that, this that, amendment, no, that, uh, is, that is still possible. Yes. Actually, I mentioned yeah, this because... But may, maybe we yeah. should uh, go step by step, but I don't know if... Uh, um... In the league, in the, in the law, there is written yeah, yeah. that the women will be given 33%. Okay. So at least it should be implemented. Yeah. Whereas it is not. It is not enforced. Yes. Ah, okay. Not okay. So just, I mean, uh, you, you need to apply the law. Yes, this yes, is, yeah. yes. This we is what you are asking. Yeah. 
We are stressing yes, to apply that. And but, working, uh, working, working on the future to get 50% yeah. uh, yeah. of the women. Uh, the, yes. Yeah, yeah. Gender balance. Uh, no, 50% 50, 50 is good. Is, is good. Yeah. Okay. okay. It would be nice. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, working on it uh, as an objective in the future because yes. uh, women can uh, yes. do it uh, in the uh, very good. So uh, yes. we need more women in power. Yes. We need more women. That's we, we very much appreciate your endorsement and also the editing of this resolution. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Ms. Manal. And uh, you're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Jean. Participation for your uh, comprehensive support uh, uh, across the region, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Pakistan, University of Kashmir, and especially the current scenario, which is affecting uh, the vulnerable community as a women and children. They are the most vulnerable. Uh, not only in Afghanistan, uh, they are as uh, vulnerable in Pakistan and uh, more vulnerable in Pakistan we have Mr. Kashmir because uh, all the laws which are made in Pakistan are automatically transferred to Zafarabad in other part of Kashmir. So they are uh, equally disturbing uh, um, culture, languages, uh, history and everything. So once again, thank you very much, you gentlemen, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank and uh, we will remain in contact and we will continue uh, working for the good cause of uh, human rights and uh, liberties of the people. Thank you, thank you for your presentation.